Question is from Jeremy Longprey. What are the positives and negatives of being a trainer? Do you have any advice that you wish you knew when you first started? Hard to get, hard to get rich. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> it's it's not if you're it's not a money grab. If you're super driven by money and you just want to make a lot of money, which I was. Yeah, get into <laughs> get into finance or investments. Uh, you know, be a, a, a you know give work with money. That's how you're gonna make I, a lot either of money. that yeah, or you know around. by defense because I am this person. I was driven first by money before I was the passion to become a personal trainer. But because I was so driven by money and I fell in love with personal training, you figured out a way. I exactly. <laughs> Yeah. It forced me to get better and better at my craft because just being good, uh, being a good trainer, you're not going to get rich at all. And even being great, probably you're not. Uh, I, so it really uh, forced me to continue to reinvent myself, to grow, to learn, to push, to be at a whole other level, to get to that small percent that make it to that kind of revenue. So yeah, yeah, that's that would be a negative, right? A negative would be it's uh, potentially right. Yeah. If you're if you're trying to be it's a, a trainer, struggle in the beginning. If you're trying to be a trainer and you're not passion driven by fitness, you're gonna have a tough time because uh, that's got it. That's what takes you through everything. Mm -hmm. Another here's another negative. Um, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's a very exhausting job. Now you might think, well, why? You know, you're not you're not doing construction. You carry the lifting. emotions of other people. Not just that. That's a big part of it. But the other part of it is, let's say you work an eight hour shift. Yeah, you got to uh, split. You got to split. Yeah, very, yeah. Very few trainers work a nine to five. Yeah. Not only that, but you, let me take it a step further. Let's say you work an eight hour shift at an office. You have there's a lot of time in that eight hours where you could take a break. You don't need to talk to anybody. You can relax. You could go on the internet, talk to your friend. If you're training eight clients in a day, first off, like what Adam said, never are they back to back. If you're training eight clients in a day, you're there for 12 hours because mm -hmm. there's always gaps. But number two, you're on all eight hours. There's yeah. no break. Yeah. Client shows up, I'm working. There is no break in between, and that can be really, really exhausting. You determine the energy. Yeah. And I think that's what you're getting. It's it, it is like a suck in in a sense where like you got to really like amp yourself up so you can portray the the best version of yourself constantly. Now the now some of the positives are if if you make it this this is why too I um I, right away when I meet like another trainer I ask him like how long you've been doing it and if they've been doing it for beyond five years, I know they've already they're they're probably pretty good at what they do because it's really tough if you're not a good trainer to have made it past five years because. The things that we're talking about, even if you're really good, you're going to struggle with this. Your mm -hmm. schedule is going to be tough. You're going to go through clients you don't like training. You're not going to make a lot of money. And so if you've persevered through that, you've pro you're have probably a pretty damn good trainer if you've made five years or longer. But one of the positives are once you do establish yourself and you build a good reputation – for what you do and you're known for being a great trainer and the referrals begin to come in, then you can start to get very picky about who you train. Mm -hmm. uh, and it took me a long time. And you to, get to hang out with cool people. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely got to a point where uh, towards the back half for sure of my, you know, my 20 years is I definitely got really picky with who I trained. And then my clients got really exciting because I couldn't wait to see them because not only was I getting paid good because mm -hmm. I had also moved my rates up by that time, but I was also going to learn something. I always knew I was going to get something from them like that would continue to grow. And that is the same thing that is, makes us very passionate about the podcasting is, mm -hmm. you know, that's even more accelerating than what training was. Mm -hmm. Training I love because I got some CEO or I've got some author, I've got some brilliant tech person, and I love to communicate between sets and ask questions. And so- you know, I get this like front row seat to these brilliant minds that I can pick whatever questions I want to ask them because they're on, we're on each other's time. That is extremely yeah. valuable. Yeah. And you develop a, a close relationship because these people see you for one to three undivided attention mm. hours a week for years. So they spend more undivided time mm. with you than they do with most of their family Other members. Other family members, yeah. So you you actually develop a really close relationship and it's great when they're successful smart people. I mean, I, one of the reasons why I love training doctors, I, you guys know I love science and I love medicine and I love health. I would ask them all kinds of insane questions and because we're friends, they would ask, they would talk to me about them and and they valued the the time as well. So it was really cool. The other part is this is that there's a lot of jobs that are out there where you don't really feel your value, yeah. you don't really feel the meaning behind what you're doing because you're either pushing buttons or you're making a small part of a big product, and so you don't necessarily see the impact no. that you that you have in society. When you're training people and you're doing a good job, 
and they lose weight, get better shape, they feel no more pain, yeah. their health improves. You see it directly, and so you have this mm. incredible sense of meaning. The reward is right in front of you. Totally. I, I think that, I mean, that's initially what people get into, I think, personal training if they're really passionate about it. They want to impact other people's lives, and you can do that on a one to one basis, and it's literally right in front of you. And I, I totally agree. I've I had some of the best conversations I've ever had is with some of my, you know, main clients that I see on a regular basis. And, and I just can't, you're not going to get that from a regular job because you're not going to be able to go that deep. Uh, with somebody else because you know you're on this it's like you're on this journey together you become like uh you know like it, it's a it's a deep bond that you share well it, it's for to sal's point about the meaning thing uh of all the professions uh, it's probably and it's not the only one there's plenty of other ones that i think uh, like doctors would say they probably feel similar with this too is that it reveals your purpose really quick like if this was what you were meant to be oh, yeah. doing like the first time that you do something where you like fundamentally change somebody's life. Like somebody came to you, they're, you know, 45 years old. They've struggled with weight loss forever. They're obese. They've tried this diet. They've done this. And you unlock something for that person that like fundamentally changes them forever. Mm -hmm. Oh my, it gets, gets me emotional just talking about it because it reminds me of all those feelings that I've had when I've had a client like this. When you get that, holy shit, does that provide a, a, such a larger purpose in what you're doing? And if you just remember that as a trainer, that that's your true north, yeah. then everything that you do below, before that to lead to that will really help guide you in your career. And that's extremely rewarding. Yeah, it's, it's to me, it's like, it's truth. It's like, it's like, finding truth you know it's like i feel like it's like a, it's deep like that like you're, like you're you're on this journey to find like answers like that if you have one little key for them that's that's a truth that they didn't have before you know mm -hmm. and it's like something that you can help them find and you're like sort of this oracle like you're here here's where it is but you have to find it yourself and the reward in it is that you know they understand it and then they apply it themselves that's the real reward yeah and it's just it's positive it's always it's always positive and it can be with people who are totally different from you you know i've had clients that are completely differing political views and religions and whatever but they're there to get healthy i help them get healthy and the it's incredible um you know some of them i remember phone calls i would get from clients i had one i've told this story before i had an old older client who came in on her day off to tell me she was so excited. She was 80 years old. She had lost her independence. Her daughter came in and hired me to train her. And after about seven or eight months of training, this woman regained her independence and she came into my gym on her off day to tell me that she was able to go grocery shopping for the first time in two years by herself. She was able to close the trunk of her car all by herself, and she made the trip to come into my gym, walked in, gave me a hug, and said, I, I'm independent again because of the training that you've given me. And that right there was worth, it's worth more than money to me. It was worth way more than money. It's what kept me a personal trainer for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, believe me, I had clients offer me jobs and wanted to pay me more, and I was like, you know, I need to feel like I have some meaning behind what I do. You know, not to end this on a negative note, but oh, uh, so positive <laughs> crap, crap, you get, yeah, I know we were all like getting emotional and positive. I'm going to crap you out for a second, but it, it just reminded me of something that, uh, really bothers me. And it, it, and it was something that I spoke to a lot as a, as a, a leader of trainers for many, many years is the, the scarcity mindset. And if you really understand your purpose of, of, of helping and serving people and you've, you've fallen in love with personal training and you claim that you love it so much and that, that is your purpose and what you're doing and you're listening, you're nodding your head and you're like, yes, that's, that's the feeling's amazing and you're a trainer. But then you're also scared to, to direct your people towards information that it could be provided in a better way through them than yourself uh, in fear of losing financial gain. Uh, it, that, that's such a scarcity mindset and will put a ceiling on your cap of how great you become. You know, one of the, the things that made me very successful as a trainer is I, I never feared that because I truly believe that if my true north was that my ultimate goal was to unlock that key for this person is to provide that life-changing feeling or moment for them or forever, you know, change their behaviors. And if everything I was giving towards them wasn't doing that, or even if I was doing things for them, but I knew there was somebody else that could provide even more value for that person, I was okay with potentially losing them as a client to give them the answer or to help them better. 
if you come from that place, it always comes back tenfold. I might have lost hundred percent. I might have lost one hundred and fifty dollars an hour because I sent her over to Doctor Ruscio, who really needs to dive into her gut. And even though I understand that stuff really, really well, and I've read lots of stuff, he's fucking ten times better than I am at that. Even though that I, I lost the one hundred and fifty dollar an hour client, I pass it over to somebody who I think is really going to change that person's life. What ends up happening is two, three years down the road, that person has not only talked about the great things that Mike did, but she'll always remember that it was me who sent her over there to help her. I get just as much credit for that. And it may not it directly affect my pocket right then and there, but I always end up getting three, five, ten other people reaching out to me because of that. And you know what's funny? I've never lost a client because of that. Right. It's mm -hmm. never happened to me. No. If anything, they come to me more because I guided them right. in the right direction. As far as advice that I'd have for myself when I first started, I wish Mind Pump existed. I wish because... My personal training knowledge came from certifications, yep. bodybuilding magazines, my own research, and my own experience. If I, if Mind Pump had existed back then, I would have shaved. I mean, you can't ever replace uh, experience, but I would have shaved a good, I don't know, five years off the amount of time it took me to to go from sucky trainer to oh, not bad trainer. Yeah. You know.